one. So we are going to get started, which means let's sit down and stop writing on other people's names. <laughs> <laughs> specific comment there. there. Yeah, that's okay. So yes, make sure your cell phones are away and you are ready to give your full attention to these four fabulous people who have worked so hard over this school year to put together these amazing projects for you all to see. Um, we're going to start here um, with Ming, whose project I've been supervising this year very proudly. Neither the honey nor the bee, queer figures throughout the ages, and I'll be passing around two physical copies of the book that she's put together so that you can look through as we go. Uh, I've been so excited to supervise this project this year when Ming came to me. Uh, I knew it combined two things she's very passionate about, telling people that everyone needs to know about different historical figures, <laughs> which if you talk to me, you know that that <laughs> happens a lot, and then her artistic and creative side, and they just come together into this fabulous book and project. So thank you, Ming, for asking me to be your advisor, and I can't wait to for you to show everyone what you've done. So yay, Ming. <laughs> figures. Uh, it starts in, in Sappho, 600 BC, and it goes up to about now. Um, I'm going to go through kind of the list of the people, a little summary of them, and I'm talk a little bit about how I made the project itself. It's been a long time coming, guys. <laughs> uh, I started with a big brainstorming list. Emily, you saw this. You could tell me. Uh, and I went through, and I narrowed it down a lot. We're based off of two main criteria, which is location. I wanted to get a pretty worldwide spread as best I could. I didn't succeed as much as I wanted to, but what can you do? People in Asia you know, don't like writing about gay people, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a spread. Um, and then also what they did. Well, most of these people have a lot going on. They're busy. They're interesting. They're that's kind of why I picked all of these people. And then, these are, so this is in chronological order, but I'm going to show it to you in the order of how I made them. More storylines. The first person who was Julie Daubeny is a French opera singer and fencer, which are the two, two coolest jobs anyone could ever have, <laughs> <laughs> for in the 16th and the early like 1700s. She was also, a, I would call it, criminally lesbian, because she, there's a point at some point here I mentioned that she, one of her lovers went sent to a convent, and she kidnaps the woman, like kidnaps, <laughs> and then takes the body of a dead nun, puts it in the bed, sets the room on fire, and runs away. <laughs> <laughs> so, she is charged with kidnapping, body snatching, and arson. <laughs> but it's fine. She gets pardoned by the king like four times. She keeps doing kind of things like this. And she was very good at opera, apparently. <laughs> because opera, you need to be dramatic for opera. So you think also. <laughs> Second person I made was Roberta Cowell, which is, I think, the most interesting person on this list because she just kept doing things. And she lived for quite a long time. So she's this British trans woman from London, I guess. And she, <laughs> I think that's her of London. I wrote down that's her of London. Um, she was, she, early in her life, she was a race car driver and mechanic. And then she, during World War II, joined the Royal Air Force, is a fighter pilot. And she was uh, taken prisoner by the Germans and was a prisoner of war for the end until the end of the war, which was two years, I think. And then returned to race car driving. This is when she underwent her gender transition. And she, then she kept race car driving. And then she died in 2011. <laughs> I'm still race car driving, as far as I can tell. <laughs> the person I did was Storm the Library. It, I think that's how you pronounce it. That's how she pronounces it. And then she is attributed more often now as the person who started Stonewall, quote unquote. She was a bouncer and a like a drag king in the, uh, New York in the 60s and 70s. And, Eyewitness accounts said that she was the person like fighting the police that led to the riots occurring. She was cool. She's this biracial lesbian woman who's very calm and not care about the police. Um, this person is the one that was hardest to source because 
all I had was about 8,000 newspaper clippings. Those are not fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, the Yakima Herald from 1908. Interesting. But he's a trans man from the original from Indiana, moved to Seattle, and he was young, young. And then he worked mostly like ship jobs and like docking jobs. It was like a rowing city at the time. And the most interesting part of his story is the I three or four I think I, I think I have three here women who are, tribu are attributed to having straight up killed themselves over him because <laughs> he was just like yeah. such a, such a, like a, a dastardly <laughs> womanizer. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> anyway, <coughs> it's likely that the first story was vague was partly true, and the rest were people trying to get a lot of attention in the newspapers. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and then I did Sappho. Couldn't leave her out, obviously. She's like this very early Greek poet. Very cool. She's very influential in that field of like poetic fields. And she's known for being extremely lesbian. We named the word after where she lived. <laughs> There's a fun story about that that I will not talk about. <laughs> it's not related to the story. <laughs> Um, yeah, she's Sappho. I hope most of you probably know who Sappho is. She's the title of my senior project, Now the Honeymoon Bee is from one of her fragments that we have. I'd also just like to do whatever the opposite of a shout out for Pope Gregory the Seventh is, because he burnt all of her works. <laughs> <laughs> probably shouldn't swear, but you get my point. <laughs> Uh, and I, uh, I don't speak French, so I'm going to say Coxonel, and we're going to move on from that. <laughs> she was a French trans woman and performer. In the, she transitioned in the 50s, very early, but it was kind of like the point. This guy named George Burrow invented like kind of the the pinnacle of like safe transition surgeries. So this was like she was like the one of the first people to get those. So before it was like. Lily L. went to that were getting surgeries and they were not safe, and she died from that. But here is like this kind of turning point where it was finally like safe and you could. It was very easy to get on hormones back in the day. You could just go to the pharmacy and it would be there. <laughs> and then the French were like, you can't do that. She's also the first person, first trans person to get married in France legally. Yeah. And the Catholic Church was like, yeah, you can do this. It's chill. <laughs> so she, they were like, hey, you need to get rebaptized. But otherwise, you can get married. It's fine. I don't. I feel like that's the only time they've ever done that. <laughs> I'm not an expert on the Catholic Church, but that's what I'm gonna say. <coughs> Next person is Selma Lagerlöf. I forgot that we went over her O in the title. Um, she's a very famous Swedish children's book writer. She, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, she's like a traveling. She a lot of traveling for a lot of books. Her famous books are the Ghost of Burling Saga, which is about this, it's like 12 weird men and their leader, Ghost of Burling. They're very strange stories. They don't make a lot of sense. <laughs> and then she wrote this children's geography primer called The Wonderful Adventures of Nils, the jungle boy. He gets shrunk down. He goes on the back of a goose and he sees Sweden from above. <laughs> and she was very famous as the first woman and the first Swedish person to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. And it was, she's like this kind of controversial figure because that she broke the Swedish literary tradition. Oh, shocking. I know. <laughs> she, yeah, she's got an honor doctorate. She was elected to the Swedish Academy, which is what awards Nobel Prizes. Um, she was the first woman to place on Swedish banknotes. She was picked by Astrid Lindgren, which is a fair point, because Astrid Lindgren is also a very important writer. She wrote pretty long stuff. Kina Rodriguez is a Colombian sculptor. She and she's an artist. She's known for a sculpture about like the lower classes in Colombia, like the indigenous, the black community, like just poor women mostly. She focused. That's what her most her focus. Just like kind of again, how to break the tradition. She was part of the Bashwa movement, which was like a return to the earth, return to like our indigenous roots for the Colombian art movement. She was an art teacher, but she was kind of pushed aside after her death because Colombia, I guess, when people forget that they had women doing art. <laughs> hey, I'm not Colombian government. I can't tell you why I did that. 
but she's kind of more well known now. And then these last two are the only two that are really just primarily activists because they're reaching the regions where it's hard to find people. Simon Nicoli is from he's from South Africa. He is a who's a workers' rights and gay rights activist and also a prominent uh, AIDS haver. That is not right, but I can't figure out what right words to say. We're gonna stick with that, thanks, Levi. Yeah, he, his, his, the big thing he did was he met with Nelson Mandela and he managed to make it so that South Africa was the first country in the world to have a non-discrimination clause that focused on gender and sexuality, which was in 1996. Good for him. I respect that. He's also part of this very prominent prison trial. <coughs> and I was actually going to do a princess from Korea for her for this last per person, and then I couldn't find the sources, and I was very sad. So I'm, this is Mariam Mokara. She's an Iranian trans woman. She mostly fought for like the right to have transition surgery in Iran, which she won. There's a fascinating thing about Iran. You can just, the, the states like will pay you to get transition surgery. You are not allowed to be gay in Iran. It is illegal. Um, it's an interesting like duality there that does lead to, as you might be thinking, a lot of gay people getting transition surgery so they can live with their partners, which isn't great. But it's interesting what Iran does. We have a process. Go on with week and pull off a bunch of sources. This shows you the difficulty I have in finding things that are in the right language. <laughs> Half these are in Swedish. I don't speak Swedish. <laughs> so I pull out a couple that I could read, and I would take a bunch of notes, and I would make it into this, and then Jessica will help me edit it to make it look reasonable. So there was a lot of them that I could not find sources in English for, and it was difficult. I had to do all of the interviews section with Google Translate. <laughs> Uh, and I had the art, artistic portion where I would find references. Some of them were pictures, some of them were not pictures because they did not have photographs. Photography in 1700. <laughs> and then I would find a background picture. That was the thing I did to make my life easier. Um, and put it in behind. I tried to make them pretty like focused on the like person itself. This is the Paris Opera House, and that's Selma Lagerlöf's house. Oh, pretty fitting. <laughs> and then I, this was the worst part, the formatting. <laughs> Formatting's never fun. I cried several times. <laughs> but I did it. I won. <laughs> <laughs> and I, what can you do to print it? That's it. That's it. to my list real quick. <laughs> I was the Korean woman, she was very difficult to find sources for. And it was infuriating because I was like this close in like this translated copy of the like court dynastic records to her and I couldn't, and it stopped at like the year before and I was very sad. <laughs> what era was she? Like was she it was in like the 1400s, but you know, yeah. those <laughs> no, East Asian countries had to keep records. I was going to speak Korean, and that was a, tri a, tri a, tri a tribulation that I had to go through. <laughs> um, and I think that she was the main person that I wish I could have included and didn't. I was very close to putting in Natalie Clifford Barney, but she's also French. I feel like I had too many French people in this already. Vivian? <laughs> <laughs> so, about the Swedish lady, you were saying there were very few sources in English about her. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Me too. She's, yeah, so. there was like some on like the Noel Prize website and a couple other. Most of the sources are, like, she's just a lot more famous in Sweden. Yeah. Okay, uh, Who's your favorite to research? Um, I think Klaus Anel, she's really fun. 
Or Roberta, because she wrote an autobiography that was really fun to read. <laughs> More questions? I think it might be time to wrap it up, so we have to make sure we have time for our other presenters. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. <laughs>